Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of the bi-weekly wishlist or washout. If you haven't seen the series before, what I do is every other Wednesday go through all the new beauty releases that I see on Instagram, and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wishlist or if I think everything is a total washout. So this isn't going to be just a B-Wow. I'm also going to take the beginning of this video to talk about my thoughts so far on the Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star series that's been happening recently. Before we jump into that, I wanted to do a an update because I finally got a palette, you can call it a palette, that I've been waiting for for a bit and this is from Davina Cosmetics. Look how pretty that is. And this is the Moonwell Bundle which is the collaboration with Angelica Nikvist and look how pretty this is. I literally just got this in the mail like yesterday and all the shadows come individually so you have to put them into the, sha into the palette. So this isn't probably the exact way that she had them arranged in her palette but this is kind of the way that I thought would be best for me to go ahead and use these shades. So I haven't dipped in yet or even swatched, but this is going to be, I think, really fun to finally dig into. All right, so I've got notes over here about the Jeffree Star series. For these first four episodes, I didn't take notes as I watched. I took notes after, and I think moving forward, when I watch each episode, I'll take notes as I watch, because I think it's probably a little bit better, probably better to get like my exact thoughts on them like as they happen. But this is kind of my summary for the first four episodes. If you're not interested in my thoughts on this series and you want to go to the regular B-Wow, though I will be talking about some B-Wow stuff in the middle, I'll throw a time code right here if you want to skip just to the regular thoughts on new products. Okay, so I want to start with the compliment. My first thought is the editing in this series, golden. It, it's, it's amazing the way that they cut different uh, scenes in when they're talking about naming each shade in the palette, the way they cut back to different events or different things that inspired that shade. It's it's amazing. The editing is great um, and the music is spot on. I really think that it's really well done. It has a really high production value because that's what Shane is known for now. Um, but I feel like that's the, <laughs> the best compliment I can give the series right now. My main thought, so this is going to be I don't know if this is controversial or not, but each episode kind of starts and ends with snippets from Shane's life, like everyday life or big events. And I feel really meh about the relatable segments. I actually really liked the whole build up to when he proposed to Ryland. I thought that was very well done, very cute. It did seem a bit shoehorned in because it really didn't relate to anything in the episode, but I can see that it's chronological and that that happened around that time. So like I understand that and the whole cat controversy. It was interesting seeing how those played together. But overall, I feel meh about the relatable segments. It just seems like they're trying like way too hard to ground everyone, and especially Shane, to ground them in some sort of reality, which he is so, everyone in the series is so far removed from the average person, it's ridiculous, but it, it seems almost kind of cringy that they're trying to ground and they spent so much time focusing like on Shane's anxiety about flying, which is a real anxiety, but like half of the first episode is based on that. So I, ugh. I don't know. It seems like they're trying way too hard to ground themselves before talking about making $10 million on a palette, right? So that's kind of what it feels like to me. I feel like it's a bit disingenuous. And unfortunately, it's an issue I have of the series as a whole, and we'll, we'll get into that. My thoughts about this kind of are summed up in this tweet by Jenny Nicholson, who has a really great YouTube channel. I love her videos. Um, but she tweeted, I find it very odd that the emotional core of the new Shane Dawson docuseries is our implied investment in seeing a millionaire YouTuber become a multi-millionaire YouTuber the way he is understood to deserve. Touching music as he sits on the floor and cries because he finds out he hasn't been getting as big of a cut on his sweatshirt sales as he ought to. That kind of sums it up for me. We're sitting here, we're supposed to feel bad for Shane because he's only, like, a millionaire. Like, I understand that it ties into the whole, like, concept of, like, knowing your worth and, like, fighting for yourself and being your own advocate. That I can be behind. But the fact that so much of this is based on, like, I could have been making so much money. I could have been, like, Markiplier, who's worth 17 million. I could have done this and made money and got my own TV show. But I didn't. I think... See, I think the concept behind that is 
it could be good to learn and to get out there and be like, you need to be smart with your investments. You need to be smart with your business handlings. But the way it's framed is what I have an issue with. It's framed, like Jenny said in the tweet, that he's he deserves all this opportunity and all this money just because of who he is and what he's been through. I don't get behind that. <laughs> um... And it, it's just odd. Like, there are, there are several parts of the series where I'm sitting here, like, are you really complaining about where you are right now? Like, <laughs> how? Um, and it, it does come off odd. Uh, there have been some other people talking about how it was brave of him to come out and talk about his tr true feelings about feeling poor. It, and I'm like, okay, it's not... Am I, am I about to be really... Ins I don't know if this is insensitive or not, but I don't believe that. I don't believe for a second that, like, I mean, you can be insecure and you can, you know, have, you can basically feel whatever, oh, how am I going to say this? I don't want to invalidate his own feelings, but in the context of this docu-series, it's manipulative. Because the whole point, like Jenny said in the tweet, is to make you feel like he deserves this. And so they're really only putting in these feel-good, whatever, kind of build-up moments so that you're on this emotional journey where you're like, oh, he deserves to make that many million of dollars on blah blah blah, and he's been shafted for this long, and I don't like that. I don't like that kind of blatant manipulation, but of course it's a documentary. Every documentary has an agenda, and of course this one does too. So I, a big issue I had was the way that they portrayed the emotional core. We're supposed to rally behind this white guy who was shafted in his previous business dealings because he really didn't know any better, but now he's gonna get the millions of dollars he deserves. Like, I didn't like that. <laughs> Let's move on to the actual products. So of course, this documentary is meh about giving us a behind the scenes look. It is a good look into the development process that we have not seen before, but of course, we're not seeing everything. I really think we're getting the best of the best here. Like, I mean, of course we did see like the break-in that Jeremy Star Cosmetics had to deal with and the stolen amounts of product. But I do think overall this is a very sanitized version of makeup production. And it's because it's never been done before. And because he's doing this, he's making a lot of other makeup companies look very bad. So there, of course, there's another agenda behind that. Before the actual palettes themselves, I'm gonna hold total judgment until we see the actual finished product. Because as of right now, it doesn't really feel tempting to me at all and it also confirmed everything i thought about mini palettes that come out alongside they're just recycled shades which, which is a great business decision like yo throw out another palette call it a mini and just use all of your not as great shades in there right just throw them all in i have to say that the logo is pretty awesome the well like the pig with like the dead eyes that was actually really cool and i love like how the mirrors look and how the merch looks i'm not buying anything because i'm not supporting them I'm, I'm watching the videos which is that's a whole nother huh, discussion about the amount of money they're making from their own marketing campaign which we're going to get into in a little bit but i'm not buying anything from the collection uh that being said everything is going to sell out in like two minutes. I guarantee it. Because this is the most genius marketing strategy. You're basically spending a year and a whole Shane Dawson series promoting one line of products. They're definitely going to sell out. No matter how many times Shane is like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know if it's going to be great. They're going to sell out. Not only are you getting millions upon millions of views per episode of this marketing documentary, it's huge. It's huge. You've got one of the biggest shilling companies, Morphe, behind you that's also going to shill <laughs> your products. And it's, it's going to be huge, no matter what they say. And so whenever... Uh, like, I do feel a bit of a way <laughs> when they feel... When they showed him being, like, so insecure, which to a point I get, like, I understand that as a person who has done what he's done so far to be hesitant about joining the beauty community. But at a certain level, you have to think, you have 20 million subscribers and you're collaborating with one of the most successful brands and one another of the biggest YouTubers on the platform who is a billionaire. And I mean, I 
don't want to say I feel like it's disingenuous, but there has to be like a, if he didn't think it was going to be successful, he wouldn't have done it, right? Shane would not have done this if he didn't think at some level that it was going to be a success. Um, another sidebar I didn't mention, um, the lipsticks. I think they look actually pretty cool. I have to say Jeffree Star Cosmetics has one of the best lipstick formulas I've ever tried. So I think those are... I mean, they look really nice. The shades look really nice. I think they're going to do really well. So like I mentioned before, how this is like one of the best examples of like an incredible marketing campaign, because literally they don't really have to do any other marketing. This is their marketing campaign for the series. And the series is going to end the day the palette drops. Like that's genius. So a note I wrote down, um, there was a video that I watched. Let me see if I can find the channel because that would help. So the channel name is Andre Terabia. I think that's how you pronounce it. And the title is Why Jeffree Star is a Brilliant Businessman. And he did an excellent breakdown of the second episode where he talks about how basically Jeffree Star did the perfect pitch to Shane Dawson. And that's all it was. It was a pitch because Jeffree Star stands to make so much more money from having Shane Dawson as a client, not only just in makeup, but in merch. Like, can he, I can't even imagine the amount of money that could be made there. Because even from his own palette, he did. He said in his own words, his take home from one of his most successful palettes was $20 million. Could you imagine the Shane Dawson? Like, they're going to make so much money. And so that video, I would highly recommend checking it out because he really breaks down each section of that episode and talks about how it was all just one pitch. And because of all of this, Shane is so overwhelmed that he literally starts crying. This business pitch was so freaking well crafted that it made a client cry tears of joy. And that's why Jeffree Star is a genius businessman. Now, would this work on anybody? We don't know because the circumstances of this partnership are so unique. But it's certainly a great case study of how to get somebody to sign a business deal. It's deeply personalized and cathartic. It's centered around the client. Jeffrey has brought to Shane something he never had before. The business knowledge to take his career to the next level and correctly monetize his platform. Shane, on the other hand, has also given something that's equally valuable to Jeffree Star. By showing a side of him to the world that he's unable to show on his own. The kind and thoughtful part of his personality that might help repair some of the damage to his reputation. Both of them seem to have brought the best out of each other. And let's face it, they're both gonna make a shit ton of money because of this. <laughs> That's kind of what I got from it too. I couldn't definitely um, express it as eloquently as Andre could, but it's a pitch. It felt like a pitch because it was a pitch and it was hook, line, and sinker. It worked 100%. I also think this has some interesting implications to all of Trophy Star's past friendships because if this is how he's treating Shane, imagine, like, is this how, like, Manny or uh, Laura Lee were brought on? Did he also do a pitch to them and were they kind of sucked in that way? And were they kind of seeing it more as a business relationship? Whereas Jeffrey seems to be mixing this odd mixture of business and friendship, which to a certain extent I think can happen. But you're getting into some really murky waters here. Like, if you're mixing business, friendship, family to that kind of degree... <laughs> And so maybe that's why a lot of his past has been so messy. If he's gone into all of his friendships the way that we've seen here with Shane, where it's just been like, there's no separation like between friendship and business. Okay, and the last thing I really want to touch on is um, the part of the series that actually made me like go ick and like almost not want to watch it. The whole thing about after the cat controversy that Shane had um, the part where he was saying, like, he needs to act more like the worst parts of Jeffrey when it comes to controversies, where he's like, oh, I'm not even gonna apologize anymore. I'm gonna be like, oh, boom, there's my palette, go buy it. Like, I understand that that's a defense mechanism. And to an extent, it's going to make Shane himself feel better for the short term to get over whatever controversy that he's involved in that I have to remind you, he brought on himself. Everything that comes back to him are things that he has done in the past. I just want to say that. It's not like he's dealing with controversies that other people have done. These are all things that he's said have been recorded and are coming back to him. So I was just really turned off by the way that he was like, yeah, I, I need to act more like Jeffrey. I need to not apologize anymore. I need to just do blood. I need to like push my products instead. Like that really made me lose a lot of respect for him. Like, in the moment, he's like, yeah, blah, 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 I'm gonna be so bad, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, like, but 
Those are all the worst parts of Jeffree Star. That he is idolizing. I'll say that again. He, in that moment, was idolizing the worst parts of Jeffree Star. And saying that he needed to be more like that. So, like I said, I think it's better. It's a defense mechanism in the short term. But, like, long term, that's going to have an effect on him and his character. And it made me lose a lot of respect for him, if I'm being honest. So, my last note here is that the series is making me like Shane less and less. Because I was on the fence about Shane. And with each episode, I'm just going, mm, mm, mm. So, those are my thoughts so far. I feel like I went a lot longer than I thought I would. But... Let's jump in straight first to something that was actually mentioned during the last episode, which was Jameis Chaneo's new mini palette. So this piece of crap is literally the biggest money grab, the most shameless money grab I think I've ever seen. They literally, they have zero creativity here. Not only did they first come out with a rainbow palette, you can do everything you want, blah. Now for their anniversary release, they're coming out with just a mini version of that exact same goddamn palette. <laughs> like, they could have literally done anything and it would have been better than this, but oh my god, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And in, Sh in episode four of the Shane Dawson series, they mentioned that they originally wanted to release this on the anniversary of the first palette, which was November. But Shane said he was going to have his release first on November 1st, and so they scrambled. And that's probably why this was pushed up and released in... When did it first actually get released? Like, early October? Mid-October? And that's why. <laughs> because they were like, oh, we need to push that out. We need to get the Shane stuff out. Which I think James Charles deserved. He needs, a, like, a reality check. I honestly hate him. <laughs> I was just He's such a disgusting human being, quite honestly. But I think he needs to be knocked down a few pegs. And I would have loved to see like his reaction to that. Like I would have killed to be a fly on the wall in that Morphe phone call, right? But it's this is so stupid. This is so stupid. So ColourPop is coming out with yet another Disney collab. I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, to be quite honest. I can't keep all the ColourPop releases straight at this point. But really, they're beyond beating a dead horse at this point. I actually think these are pretty interesting. These are from Huda Beauty and these are the new mini um, obsession nude palettes. And I actually don't know how big they are because they, they do specify that they're a mini palette. So I think they're going to be smaller than the actual obsessions palettes, which are already like pretty small. They're like this big. So I don't know how small these are going to be. I would want to see it in person because they're 30 bucks, which is a bit pricey still, but I got to see like how big the actual palette is. And I love the fact that they actually came out with nudes for a variety of skin tones. It's not just that first pale salmon one. It's a light, a medium, and a deep, which is actually really nice. And once I actually see these in, in store, if I find one that I like, most likely that light colored one, I'll see about picking it out. So Sigma came out with a new brush collab set with Rox Roxette. I have no idea who this person is. The brush set looks fairly basic and I don't understand why like they're going all out with like this collab versus all the other ones that they have. Like they don't really market the rest of their like influencer brush sets like the same. So this one was a bit odd to me that they're really going above and beyond for this one when they really have a bunch of other influencer collabs right now that they're really ignoring. So I guess the difference is that those other brush sets, they're literally just a brush set that comes in a box, whereas like this one, they made a special case for her. But like, why? I don't get it. They're still just brushes. Uh, and none of these are brushes that I actually like, like or use. <laughs> so the, the there's no value in here to me. Ah, uh, the brand everyone is finally talking about about a year and a half too late. Tati Beauty. I remember saying back when the Halo bullshit first started that I would be interested and that I would buy from Tati if she came out with either skincare, like actual, like, put on your face skincare, or makeup. After the bullshit that came with the rest of the Halo products that they released, I called it quits. I said, I'm no longer supporting her. This is some bullshit. Especially her reaction to it. Like, she came back and was, like, so aggressive against her own subscriber. Even the ones who were supporting her, but saying, hey you're going a bit far with these like bird seed vitamins you know um so i'm not supporting this everyone else and their mother is like finally we're getting makeup and i'm like hmm. keep your eye out and who's like really excited for this and how they reacted to halo beauty that being said it's a very basic neutral palette um 
because of course it is that's what like everyone almost everyone comes out with for their first palette for their line i have to say the like chunky glitters don't look that great i will say though i love the way that she swatched them for the promotional photos like all down her arm that was actually really cool and i liked it i thought that was very like chic and elegant and it's a different way of swatching and so <laughs> kudos to that that was actually really cool but i'm not really that interested in in the palette and i'm not gonna buy anything from tati beauty oh my god there's another bh palette coming out and they're coming out with a new um holiday collection the fairy lights collection i think the brush set actually looks cute but i don't need any more brushes the palette is just kind of like meh yeah yeah just like meh but the brushes look cute the brushes are good quality i've tested out a brush set from them and i liked it but actually i probably should do like a brush to clutter i have so many brushes and of course, would it be a, uh, a B-Wow if there wasn't like six ColourPop releases? This one's called the Bye Bye Birdie Collection and what the fuck is this? <laughs> Ugh, oh, I'm getting so sick of ColourPop, guys. Like I gotta say, the packaging is really pretty, but like the products, <sighs> they're literally a dime a dozen. Okay, so this actually looks really cool. <laughs> Milk Cosmetics is coming out with their holiday collection where it looks like there are two palettes that fit together to make like a sugar skull and uh, that's fucking awesome. Like I think it looks so cool. Um, I think the inside of one palette is like green and uh, gray and red and then the other one seems kind of a more traditional rainbow one. I'm not 100% sure but i i'm interested and again like ColourPop dropped three other palettes <laughs> stop just please stop there's like the love bird the bird of paradise and the night owl and none of them are interesting you've they've already come out with these palettes please stop okay and the last thing i want to go over is this new palette from huda beauty which is going to be coming out at the end of this week this is their holiday palette i believe um and it just looks Meh. Yeah, like I, I look at this and I'm just like, okay, yeah, it's it's there. <laughs> what of it? All right, so that's it for this Be Wow, as well as the roundup of my thoughts so far on the Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star series. I think that's going to be like eight or nine episodes. They're just going to keep going up until November 1st. So I'll see about doing maybe another Be Wow or another video dedicated to my thoughts before the end. Um, of course, everything's going to sell out. Like I said, my thoughts on the marketing campaign and whatnot. But let me know what your thoughts are down below and how you feel about Shane and how you feel about this series. Thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.